Good evening. Uh, again, I'm Jorge Montiel. I'm an organizer with the Industrial Areas Foundation. I work with COPS Metro and the San Antonio Sponsoring Committee, a new organizing effort here in San Antonio. And it is my responsibility tonight to help us follow the money trail when it comes to uh, the, the, what we call the business of family detention. Can you hear me back in the corner? Yeah, all right. Even louder. So I think most of us are familiar with this curve. It shows the trend of undocumented immigration to, to the United States. And as you can tell, it reached a peak around 07, 08, and has been tapered down or has gone down since then, not surprisingly because of what's happened to the economy. Uh, people want to come here to get jobs, and if there are no jobs, they don't want to come here. However, something totally different has happened to the cost of detaining immigrants in this country, and that is the curve has not changed. In fact, it has continued going up, and it broke the $1 billion mark uh, back in 2011, and it has continued rising ever since. Let me tell you a story about a quota. The U.S. Senate added language to the Department of uh, Homeland Security Appropriations Act in 2010 that said the following, ICE, immigration, shall maintain a level of not less than 33,400 detention beds. That went up in 2013 to 34,000 beds. What does that mean? It became known as the Immigrant Detention Quota, or the bed mandate. We're telling eyes, we're giving them money, and we're telling them you must have this many beds, and in some instances, congressmen are telling them you must fill them. And what we know is that there is no other law enforcement agency in the country that has a quota from Congress, except for ICE. How did that come about? Well, there was a lot of lobbying to make sure this happened. One of those responsible is CCA, Corpor uh, Corrections Corporation of America. They spent between 2008 and 2014 $10.5 million lobbying immigrant detention and immigration reform issues. Not only that, but of that amount, CCA spent 61% of the dollars lobbying the subcommittee that dealt with DHS appropriations. So if you're wondering how you get that language in there, this is how. The GEO Group, another private prison company, spent $460,000. They need some catching up to do uh, in lobbying between 2011 and 2014, but they're just getting started. And as a result, they got some contracts. What we know is that 62% of the ICE detention beds are operated by for-profit prison companies. And that's up from 49% in 09. GEO and CCA together operate eight of the 10 largest detention centers in this country. And get this, following the quota, the implementation of the quota, they grew their share of the total ICE detention system from 37% in 2010 to 45% in 2014. They were rewarded by the implementation of the court. You still with me? Now, how does this translate to dollars and cents? Well, there was a significant payoff. Between the implementation of the quota, the beginning of the implementation of the quota, and now, CCA saw their profits go from $133 million to $195 million. The GEO Group did a little better. They went from $42 million in 07 to $144 million. Let me save you the math. That's 244% increase in profit. Now, this is a little harder to see, but it shows the stock price of these two companies over the last five years. If you'd invested with them five years ago, you would double your money. Not a bad investment. Now, it's interesting, though, 
early in the summer, something happened. Maybe this little IWC group of rebels started messing with the detention quota. They're, they're both going down a little bit. Uh, CCA lost, uh, went from, from a high of 40 to a 31, and the GEO grew from 40 to 32. So maybe they're a little concerned about the talk about reducing family detention, because that's lost business, right? Well, we'll see what happens, but don't be too sad about their economic future because, hey, there's some alternatives to detention. Or is it an alternative form of detention? The monitors are brought to you by the BI Incorporated, a subsidiary of the GEO Group. So if you want to reduce the tension, that's fine. We'll come up with a different form of business, and we're going to still make it money. And this is a tagline in their website, a leader in offender monitoring. Right. So we're referring to these women as offenders. I started reading, when I started thinking about this, this issue, I started reading this book called Why Some Things Should Not Be For Sale. I think it's relevant to this. This question is relevant to what we're talking about. And I want to leave you with a line from this book. Markets not only allocate resources among different uses and distribute income among different people, but particular markets also shape our politics and culture, even our identities. Efficiency, we're going to use that word a lot when we talk about private prisons, Efficiency is clearly not the only value relevant to assessing markets. We have to think about the effects of markets on social justice and on who we are, how we relate to each other, and what kind of society we can have. Deborah Satz, S-A-T-Z. Uh, I heard this really terrible line one time when it said, you know, when you deal with drugs, the problem with dealing with drugs is that you sell the drug and then it's consumed and it's gone. When you deal with people, when you buy and sell people, which the cartels in Mexico have begun doing, you can sell them over and over and over. It's terrible to think about that, but it sounds like Gio and CCA taking a page out of the book of those cartels. Thank you.